When I was a teenager, I fell in love. Not with a lot of women in particular, but with cars and motor car racing in specific. And not Formula One like you might think. I fell in love with GT racing, and in particular, the Le Mans 24 hour race, or the great race as it's known. I love the cars of that period. The 60s for me, incredible. The C-types that won Le Mans, evolved later into the, the E-type Jags of the time. Ferraris did the same. They were really tricky cars, but they really were the supercars of the day. Real Le Mans cars are, of course, out of reach of most, except for the disgustingly rich. And even then, they're so highly strung as to be undrivable on today's roads. However, circa 1985, a bloke called the Noble created a kit form Le Mans type car called the Ultima, with a true mid-engine layout, all based on easily obtainable Ford and Renault parts. Space frame chassis and aerodynamic body, it won practically everything it entered and evolved a couple of times in the process. Prior to designing the Ascari supercar, Lee started to build a third version of the Ultima with a better chassis and a completely new body style. He never finished the job, and one of his racing customers, who had already bought his own Ultima and modified it, bought the whole shooting match. Ted Marlowe took the basic car and totally re-engineered it. Out went the basic Renault engines and transmissions, and in came a totally revised space frame chassis, Chevy V8 power, driving through a Porsche 911 transaxle. A million and one refinements later, and you have the Ultima Sports of today. A true supercar, a Le Mans car, but for the road. Getting into an Ultima is no easy matter, but once you're in, it all holds you perfectly. And the first thing you notice, of course, is how simple it all is. Rev counter, speedo, bang in front of you, prominent position. Ancillary gauges, warning lights, etc., switch gear, just below it, but still perfectly visible. Obviously, you're in a race car here, up to a point. Right-hand gear change. You might not think, ooh, you know, I'll be in des desperate trouble with one of those, but you won't be, a few miles with this, and it's easy, easy. Racing seats hold you like a glove. Racing seat belts, six-point Willens harness, no problems at all. Well, I suppose when you've got yourself something that looks like a Le Mans car, the one thing you want it to do is drive like one. So here we are. My God! Incredible! Tremendous power, tremendous urge. 350 brake horse under your feet. Whoa, tram lines a bit. But it feels all of a piece, you know? It's like, just, you kind of all that one with it. Probably the epitome of style and grace getting in and out of these, but uh, that's the price you pay. Look no further than this. Carbon fibre pylon mounted rear wing. It says so long, sucker, as you blur into the distance. In there, the business. 5.7 litres, Chevy V8. 350 brake horsepower, Porsche 911 five speed transaxle. Fantastic. Mid-mounted, proper place for an engine. Luggage space, you say? Phew, there's a bit in the sides. Not a lot, but enough for a weekend. 25 grand gets you this motor car in kit form. 40 grand from the factory, built. Any colour you like. Do I like it? No. I love it.